So let's celebrate 2020. And it's my birthday. And also, it's Fire to Inspire's birthday. So let's celebrate. Woo woo! <laughs> that was so weak. <laughs> that one about a hill of beans. But look, y'all, I've been partying, so my voice is gone. I've been to the cabin with my girls this weekend. So bear with me as we get through the show today. So thank you for tuning in on IBNX Radio Network every Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. And thank you for tuning in to our new series titled Diary of a Preacher's Kid, which is a non-religious take on faith on someone who is trapped in both worlds. I've literally been out like fighting heaven and hell. I've been in between both worlds trying to figure out where is my place? Where do I stand? What is my purpose? And so I'm, it's, it's very valuable to me. Today is going to be very important because I really kind of want to set the world on fire with the Holy Ghost again. I think that we're thirsty. We're hungry. The millennials have turned their backs on the church. And guess what, y'all? Guess what? Dear diary, what do you do when you have lost your religion? I'm letting you in on a little piece of who I am today. I'm getting a little personal. I'm not going to get I'm not going to play a lot today because I want us to be serious about this. I believe that I lost disconnection with God. You know, a lot of times we go through so much in life. Life will beat you down at every corner. It's always something the enemy is just running rampant. And you wonder why you're going through so much anxiety, so much stress, depression, all of these things. How many people did you know of that off themselves last year? Can I get an amen? That is just not, it's not a good thing. So what can we do to bring back that value, that relationship that we need with God? So this series will be teaching you on how to live a more fulfilled life and help guide you on the right path spiritually so you become your full potential and live out your bold purpose. A lot of times we don't know what we're here for. We don't know why we're here. But do we, we're going to figure out that today. So, guys, I have a very special guest right here with me, Darlene McCoy. What's going on, girl? Sister, how are you doing? <laughs> Glad I'm to be here. Good. Thank you so much for celebrating this new year with me and bringing in my new series, The Preachers of, 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 of the Preacher, The Diary of a Preacher's Kid. Let me get it together. But, guys, I want you guys, uh, we're going to be celebrating her new EP coming That's out. Right. That's Tell right. Tell got what you got going on. Actually, I have a, a new EP. It's dropping on the 24th. And um, everywhere digital music is sold, it's called Jesus Was Eclectic. Yes. Decades. Um, God gave me a vision for Jesus Was Eclectic. Um, kind of kind of as as a, a vision just to get our minds out of out of this, this in-the-box thinking of Christ. Yes. This first project is called Decades. And this I have taken narratives of... Um, different encounters with Christ in the scriptures, and I've turned them into um, songs from the, with sounds from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, right. um, Y2K, and the 2010s. Um, but you know, I'm I, I am an artist and creative and a musician, you know, to heart. But um, you know, in this particular EP, you will you will hear about the man that was at the well. I mean, the man that was at the pool of Bethesda, the woman at the well, the wow woman that had the issue of blood, you will hear that, but I've, I've actually taken the narratives because I really believe that everything that Christ did um, thousands of years ago yes. is, is still relevant in this culture today if it's explained the right way. Mm. Um, and, and that's what I did. I just, I just kind of wrote songs with some friends of mine to just make it palatable, wow. you know, for today. So what did you want the people to feel about your music? Like what I want them to feel the gospel of Christ. Yes, yes. I want them to reconnect with what, what the gospel actually is. You know, a lot of people have um, kind of marginalized what the gospel is in music. And, and it's just like, oh, it's just praise and worship. Oh, it's just this and it's oh, it's just that. Well, the gospel actually is an assignment. And that is a um, an assignment to bring good news to people, and then those narratives that we want, that we've seen these stories that we've seen in the scriptures exude answers, exude wow. you know it it actually is is it opens us up to actually who Christ is. I mean, we think about um, I have a song called Even Me that I released in 2018, um, and that's actually a part of this EP. It's the 90s. Mm -hmm. 
okay. sound. Um, but even me, no one would know that that is a that actually is inspired by the woman at the well. Wow. You know, never know that everybody gets caught up in the beat and the sound <laughs> and oh, she sounds too sexy to be gospel and <laughs> yeah, Girl, all of that. Same. But they don't see, mm -hmm. they don't see the narrative behind that. What happened was Jesus was sitting at. On, on the side of a well after he had been ministering and preaching. And then this woman, this Samaritan woman, Jesus being a Jew, Jews and Samaritans didn't talk to each other at all. Right. And Jews were the ones that did not, you don't talk to Samaritans. That's just what it is. Mm -hmm. And here's the Samaritan woman walking up to a well. Right. And he says, woman, give me to drink. Wow. And the narrative in that is, he's talking to me. Wow. Even me. He's in, in how many up. people... How many people go through life and they have God encounters, but because of what culture and even religion has told them, um, they, they will count themselves out to be one that's been chosen by God to do something great. You know what? I love that because yeah. I know a lot of times we don't feel like we're good enough. Right. That we don't have the potential enough to do what God has really called you to do all your life. That's since right. Since you were a child. That's right. And I want to know, like, how did you know that you were chosen to do what you're doing right now? Um, well, that's actually a, a loaded question a bit for right. me because sometimes you don't know what it means to be chosen. You just are. Wow. And you don't know what that means. I um, am in a real relationship with Christ. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. And so all I can say is that I'm led in my life to do things. Mm -hmm. um, the scripture says we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Yes. So I go with that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, yes. And, 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 and that's, that's the way I, I, you know, I, I identify myself. But, but to be chosen, it, it, I think that it is a great responsibility to be chosen to do something. That means that there are a lot of things that, that uh, are a lot of people that could have done things, but God chose you to do, to, to do things. It sounds so great, but the reality is if we are a chosen generation, all of us are chosen. That's it. And but I the question love, is, yeah. what are you chosen to do? What are you chosen for? You know yes, what I mean? Right. I believe that everybody is born with the seed on the That's inside right. of them when they're born. And some of us are lucky enough to get, I don't even like, I don't even like the word lucky, blessed enough mm -hmm. to get more than one seed. Right. So you, I mean, you're a national syndicated radio host. I mean, you have been working with T.D. Jakes, Erica Campbell, all the big names out there. But listen, you are bold by yourself. Thank you, sir. I mean, yeah. you have that fire behind you like no other. Your voice is so anointed. Thank you. And I think we need a new voice. We need, a, some, we need something fresh. Well, I'm going to tell you, know? you something, sis. Um, you know, even with the people that, that I have had an opportunity to work with, um, and this is, the, and I hope that this resonates to everyone listening. Yes. Um, every person has their own voice and their own sound, their own purpose. Yes. And, you know, even being, being with the greats, the thing of it is, is nobody has your story. Oh, we. Nobody has your experience and nobody has your story. And I really believe that what this is about and, and carrying the gospel mm. is, is, Sharing your real authentic story and your real experience with Christ. I think that's what it is. And I think everybody's special when it comes to that. Yes. You know what I mean? They're, they're, you know, all of us have something to say mm. if we know how to articulate it. Oh, wait. You know? Well, I don't, I don't even, I think that, you know, all of us have something that we want to do. That's right. That we have this passion and this spark on the inside of that's us. That's right. But I love how you say we have to learn how to articulate it. Yeah. But how do we own it? That's a great that's a great way to ask that question. Mm -hmm. Ownership of your authenticity. There you go. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what it is and owning who you are. Amen. Owning what you like, owning your perspective, owning what you don't like, owning what you agree with and owning what you don't agree with that's and it. owning your relationship with God. That's it. It's owning it. Oh, and no. not only owning it and embodying it and and letting it become you. Yes. You know, whereas everyone else is doing this, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I got to do me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because I think that when we're talking about a chosen generation, I think what I have, yes. me, 
is chosen. That's it. That's what it is. If mm-hmm. we're talking about that, that's what it is. So that's why each person has their own, their own perspective. Their own flavor. Their own flavor. That's and it. God gave it to you. Yes. God it. gave you your beautiful personality. Oh, thank you. Your beautiful sound. Everything about you is God. He gave that he to you sure for did. you to use every bit of it. Everything you laugh about, everything you cry about, oh, that's man. all who you are. And you have to embody that and, and love that. You know what I mean? Yes. First. Love I it first. That, like Jesus loves it. I know. <laughs> love your posts on Instagram. I Thank follow you. you. I just be hollering, girl. The stuff you be posting. I be like, this girl is like reading my mind. Really? You just post everything that I Are just you think serious? is funny. So I want to bring up one of, the, one of the things that you posted. You said okay. Trump to sign the executive order declaring Jewish people is a nation just as written in Genesis. Yeah. And it says in Genesis 12 and 2, I will make you a great nation and bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Talk about that. Woo, you, you ain't see. <laughs> you came I want to know what was in your head when you posted that, Darlene. Tell me what you got going on. Because we we are Americanized and westernized African-American people now. That's true. And we don't really realize where our roots actually trace all the way back to. Come on, teach us. Our roots trace all the way back to Christ, to David, to Abraham. Mm -hmm. And we are, and and it's not just because of our skin. It's not because of our skin. It was because it's who we were and it's who we are. And we we don't have to apologize that. And if you really want to talk about the Jews. Come on, let's talk about it. We are actually... The original ones. Oh, out somebody. And if he went there and said, as it was in Genesis, okay, <laughs> sit down, Trump, and go back and do some research on what you just did. Because, But I really believe that us as African Americans, we have taken that and, and let that become our identity. Right. But we cannot help <laughs> what our DNA is. We can't help who, what our lineage is. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. And we are from the lineage of Christ. You know, we've been shown this 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 um, Italian guy um, as the Jesus that we've been praying to. And that is not who he is. I saw that, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Jesus mm-hmm. was not that. And and we're it's almost like we're the last ones to find out. <laughs> everything. It's Everybody like, else in the world knows that. Everything, right? Yeah, I know. Everybody else knows that that was a painting for the fourth pope right. of the fourth pope's <laughs> son, and, except us. And they, here we are. We go in our, our, our family's houses, and they got this Italian guy as Jesus with this halo. That ain't who we look like. <laughs> But actually understand who Christ is. It doesn't really matter what color he was, but it did matter in civil rights. It did matter it when everybody yeah. was is oppressing a people because of the color of our skin. But you're still saying you worship in this Jesus. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Did you know that this Jesus is the, is the same color and the same DNA of these people that you're oppressing? And they're finding it now. They're finding it in research. Yes, he was. Did you see that on um? Yes, all of social media and uh, and and, he and, is and Adam. It is the truth. African American. He was. And again, it doesn't matter. I love how you say it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't but matter. But it, it matters did. to me because I want to change my perception. Come on. Because I'm gonna be honest. This is what the diary is all about. Yes. I want y'all to open up and talk about those questions that you've been having about religion for years. Really? Even the ministers. I have had conversations with ministers. I'm mm-hmm. talking about top dog ministers. Yeah. That say, mm, yeah, I've questioned my religion. Yeah. As a Christian you should. entity. You should. And and a lot of times, you know, I was born in a, you know, a, a very sanctified family yeah filled with the holy ghost fire i'm come about, on i'm talking about real. they right. used to call our church the emergency room <laughs> everybody used to come up in there your ponytail was falling off everybody hair wigs was falling off we had hunted and we did not follow it. no traditions come on sis but it's time to get back to that freedom That's right. of knowing Jesus for ourselves and who because is. it took me a long time darling yeah i'm gonna I have to it. just tell y'all the truth i had some questions about my boy 
Yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. I got. You know. Go ahead. I had. I qu- I had questions. And millennials, we're just kind of like out there. We're kind. Our minds are expanding. Exactly. It's expanded, not expanding. It's expanded. Yeah. So we kind of see past what you guys are trying to feed us. Like the movie, for instance, uh, mm-hmm. A Birth of a Nation. Yeah. I should have never saw that movie mm. because they used slavery. Mm-hmm. Well, they use Christianity mm-hmm. against us to control mm-hmm. us. And so some mm-hmm. of those passages in the Bible, how do you explain it when they're talking about slavery is okay? So I had questions about mm-hmm. Jesus and who he is mm-hmm. as a person, like mm-hmm. as a real man. Mm-hmm. Listen, I have always admired him. Mm-hmm. I have always loved God. I've always had a great connection with God. Mm-hmm. Don't get it twisted. Mm-hmm. But I was curious. Of I course. wanted to know. I wanted to know. And I, they always ask the question, don't question God. But why are you trying to silence my my relationship with mm-hmm. God? I want us to stop treating Christianity as a judgment book. Say it. Okay? Mm-hmm. It's time to look at it and, and make it new. Come make on. it fresh. Yeah. Because right now people are lost. Children are lost. People are, I mean, I'm saying people as a family. Come on, we all have mm-hmm. been there. Mm-hmm. Don't just mm-hmm. look at me because I'm talking about it. I'm mm-hmm. bold enough to say it. Yeah. That we have questions on, okay, how is it that you're telling me through Jesus Christ that's the only way we're going to get into heaven? I always say that's the number one question because I'm like, <laughs> all of these people are not. Listen, some people are born Buddhist, Muslim, Indian, Christian, I mean, you know, talk about Jewish, all these different religions and entities. So you're telling me that's the only way that we can get in. But see, God had to break me down. Come on. Because, you know, even though I was going to church and I was really into it, promise you, worship was my middle name. I love to worship and I love to praise and I love to be in his presence. So I know he's real. But the thing about it is I want us to focus on the confession. The Bible is so full of metaphors and parables, but let's really look at it. The way you perceive life is different, Darlene. The way Mm -hmm. you look at things is different, Mm -hmm. but the way God speaks to you is different. The way God speaks to me is different. And when Mm -hmm. I was trying to ask questions, I finally asked, I said, God, show me who you really are. Mm. And when I asked that question, I said, okay, God, all right, all right, let's get real. Who are you? Mm -hmm. I want to get to know you. Can I ask you questions? Can I get closer to you? Because I am, I, I, you know, our identities from babies, we are in, we are in church. Mm-hmm. But do we really want to know why we're there? Do we want to really know why we're in? What's the purpose of church? Not to get together and eat and mm-hmm. have a good time mm-hmm. and get fed with the word and hear a, a nice song. But listen, ask that question. What does confession mean? Mm. What does it mean to confess that I am saved? Mm. What does that mean? If I had to interview Jesus today, and I'm about to shut up and let you have the floor. If I had to interview Jesus today, I think he would sit down and he would tell me, Angel, it's not that I want you to look at me so much. Listen, he died. He's gone. That's history. But we got to remember today, we need to start preaching about how he lives in us and through us. The kingdom kingdom resides in us, in our own hearts. And so if we start knowing who we are and who we are, yeah, we know that cliche saying, but it's the truth. When you know who you are, you're invincible. And when I figured out what confession meant, he said, if you just not, don't look, don't focus on me. Because God, you got to think about Jesus. He was very meek. He was very humble. He didn't want to be forefront. He was chilling. He was hanging out with the sinners and the crooks and everybody else. But he also wanted to let everybody know we are the same. We are all human. We are one consciousness. And what what does it mean to confess that you are saved through Jesus Christ? It's to be him. It's to act like him. It's to walk like him. Guess what? I was born on Martin Luther King's birthday, January 15th. Martin Luther King had a dream. But guess what? Martin Luther King died for his dream. He sacrificed for a body of people that did not experience equality. So just like Martin Luther King and Jesus, it's time for us to keep going with the legacy of love. We need to go back to the basics. What you think? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you are loaded. I mean, I'm there's so many you. angles that you can take with that, uh-huh. you know. 
Um, I want to go back to one of the things that you said. You said that people ask you not to question God, but how can you be in a relationship with someone you can't talk to? Oh, come on. Um, and one thing about God, those that know God, you know God is the truth, All and right. the truth will never be hidden from anybody. That's true. So, um, and this is why he says, this is a dynamic. If you seek me, you'll find me. Oh my and when gosh. you say, when you seek me, you're actually seeking truth. Come on. And if you are still... St stuck and feeling like what you sing is a lie, then maybe it's a lie and you yes. ain't found the truth yet. And you have to continue to seek until you find that truth. And Come the only on. way that you'll know that it's true is that it will resonate with your with your soul. Come on. It'll resonate in your spirit and your soul and it'll stay. That oh, truth won't leave you. you. And you. once you know God and once you know Christ, um, that's your foundation. I see. But then realize that God, you want us to utilize that foundation to bring you this human being who you are to the earth on this foundation to be who you are. That's it. And I think that we don't, a lot of times religion restricts us from re respecting um, the process of humanity. Come on. When people are, are seeking God and seeking, to, you know, God has a, he's bigger than us. Okay. Amen. And then I keep saying he, mm -hmm. um, but we don't, and that's because a lot of times people, Think that God is just a bigger, better version of us. He's not human. He's not. He is not human. How could he be human and and create a whole universe? He's he is not out human. Of this world, he is not a man. <laughs> right. He is a spirit. That's it. And God is the ultimate supreme spirit, and He embodied who He was into a human who was called Jesus. That's it. And that's and 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 He came and not just to atone for our sins and for and for our righteousness. On the cross, he died, but he didn't just die, and that's what happens in in Come religion. On, yeah. You only focus on the fact that he died for your sins, mm. and that was just some of the story. He resurrected to give us power, mm -hmm. and resurrected to give us life. He died and came back alive so that we can understand that our lives can be powerful. He got all power in his hands. Come on. And so we always focus on that. Oh, you know, he died for me and I just love him because he did. I was a little girl when I used to question that. I don't even know him. Why would he die for me? I, know. <laughs> right. I mean, I ain't Come never on. seen him before. Talk so why would I even care? Come I was that kid. Come on. I was the, the kid that would ask the question. I don't even understand what that meant. That's it. But then I, once I understood it, I appreciate it, not just his death, but his resurrection. Come on. And the fact that he left his spirit, which is his soul. Humans have souls. That's it. Do you see what I'm saying? And Jesus as a human and embodying the, the whole spirit of the almighty God, the creator of all things, left his soul, That's which it. is the Holy Spirit, That's it. for us to live within our souls. And what does it mean to be saved? It doesn't mean that you walk around with a label. I'm saved, and I thank God I'm Come saved. On. Because guess what? I know a lot of saved people that are more savage than people that are not Ooh, saved. Oh, come on. Talk about people it. People use, they use the the uh, label Christian. They use even another label saved mm -hmm. just to say, I'm per either I'm perfect, I'm self-righteous, or whatever it is. But that's not what it means. In Aramaic, what salvation means is indestructible. Come on. When you are indestructible... Who, would, who wouldn't want to be indestructible? It means that without Christ, you can't be indestructible. Wow. But with Christ, you are indestructible. And that means that we have something inside of us that is that embodies all of who we are, and we become indestructible. Yes. But to not know that and, not, and, and to not understand that right. means that we need Christ. We're in a culture that needs Christ yes. and that needs salvation. So that we can be indestructible. Amen. Now imagine the confidence that a people, a nation, mm. a people would walk in <laughs> if you understand that you are indestructible. On, because God. I am connected to the almighty God yes. through his son Jesus. That's I'm it. indestructible. That's it. Do you see what I mean? I love it. I love it. I love it. I feel, I'm feeling you right now. I'm feeling you right now. But you know, last year was hell. Yeah. I ain't even gonna lie. For you, it was a lot, a lot of, of victories, people. but I couldn't appreciate it because I felt like I was getting knocked down every corner. Yeah, you know, I was celebrating, but I was crawling. Wow, you know what I'm saying? I've got beat down by humanity, mm. society, and how it really is. Because mm -hmm. when I was growing up, 
I was very naive. Mm-hmm. I was so pure. I saw everybody through God's eyes. Yeah. You know, I just saw the pureness and the sweetness. I don't care. I don't know if you murdered somebody. I don't know. I but but if you made me laugh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We had some kind of connection. You were my ace boon coon. But see, that wasn't a good way. To mm. to look through God to look at people through God's eyes is almost too dangerous. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You, I had to ask for the words of the, the spirit of discernment. Yeah. And when he did that, oh boy, did he oh, yes. show me who people were. Yes. And it broke my heart. Yeah. But yeah. I'm gonna, y'all, we're going to stay right there. We're going we're gonna to go on a break and we're going to be right back. Y'all hang tight. We're going to be right back. Mm. by excuses, excuses, watching everybody fly past me, wow. feel helpless and useless, been losing way too long, I lost my faith in me, how can I go on when this is all that I see, then you came along. right here we are starting our new series the diary of a preacher's kid we're gonna dive right back in because man were we talking some good stuff yeah right yeah you went in over here (laughs) (laughs) you went in man it's just been in me it's been boiling in me i had to talk about it you know these are issues that a lot of people are dealing with that's right i love that song that just came that came on thank you walk thank you what inspired that because i felt the I felt the testimony through your well, song. Well, I, I'll tell you, um, the man at the Pool of Bethesda, mm. here he was, um, 38 years. I want you to think of how old are you today? You're not going to tell anybody? 35, young and alive. See, so, so that tells you <laughs> that he was on a mat longer than you've been alive. Wow. Do you hear me? Wow. Think about that. This man was paralyzed. 
and he was on a mat for 38 years. Okay. Wow. And he was sitting in front of a pool waiting for an angel to come. Right. And stir up the pool so that somebody else, because this was a pool of miracles, supposedly. Oh, it was a, okay. a pool of miracles. Okay. Okay. So here he is for 38 years paralyzed in one spot, waiting for somebody to pick him up and put him in the pool so that he could be healed and that he could finally, somebody could come and unlock him so he could walk free. Wow. Okay. For 38 years, he was in a stuck place. And I'm sure that, that he agreed with everybody around him that as they're getting their miracles, here I am still stuck here waiting for somebody to come and help me to get into this pool so that I can be healed, so that I can walk again. And here he is. He had agreed with his handicap. He agreed that I can't get in there myself. He, he agreed that with what everybody else may have been saying about him. Mm -hmm. Everybody else around him could have said, well, he's, I mean, he's, that's who he is. He's been there. He's never going to move. Right. He's been there for 38 years. But here comes Jesus. Mm. Come on with it. What Jesus did is he walked up to him. And he didn't say anything to Jesus first. Jesus spoke to him first. And I want you to think about that. Jesus looked at him and asked him a question. Will you be made whole? He asked this man a question. <laughs> Will you be made whole? Wow. And he says, yeah, but I'm, I need somebody Ooh. to pick me up and put me in the water. And there's nobody to do that. He looked at him and said, now here is Jesus, man. <laughs> you know this man is paralyzed. He looked at this man and said, take up your bed and mm, walk. Come on. Let me tell you something. Jesus. That encounter inspired the song. Wow. Because there are so many of us that are in the same place that we have been. We have been in the same place, and maybe it ain't 38 years. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's three or eight generations. Oh, come on. That we have been sitting in the same spot, having the same mindset, and saying, I don't have what I need, and I don't have what it takes, so I guess I need to sit here until somebody Making comes to excuses. help me. Making Somebody's got to come and help me do this. And it looked to me like Jesus believed more in, in, in him than he believed in himself. And that's why Jesus asked him. It was as if Jesus was like, what is wrong with you? I know. <laughs> Don't you want to be made whole? And that's the question I would say to so many of us in our society. We, we continue to expect somebody else to do something oh, for us. We expect gosh. somebody to come and give us this and give us that. We have expectations that that's are too it. high that's for it. most people. And other people are like, I'm not getting ready to do nothing for you. I, I've already done this for myself. Come on. But Jesus was saying to him in that moment is you have everything it takes to walk, but you, yes. you believe you're paralyzed. Take up your bed and walk. And that's a song, of course, inspired by the narrative. And that's this whole, this whole project is inspired by narrative. Right. I want it to speak to your soul. That's it. I want it to encourage people to say, you know what? You know, I have a, a verse that says, yesterday wasn't fair. Some things were not your fault, but you survived. Thank God. Thank God. And with each new day comes possibilities and brand new mercies. Amen. But winning is your responsibility. Come, ooh, Take up your bed and walk. And that's what, I mean, when I think the gospel, that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. I'm thinking because that's kingdom. That's a narrative that... That's cross-cultural. I don't care if you're Buddhist. You can hear that. You can Come hear on. that and it speaks to you. Come on. I don't care what you are. I believe that Jesus Christ did that. And that was the example. And that is not privy. That's not subject to just Christians. That's, that's subject to culture. I can talk to anybody. I don't care who you are. If I explain that story to you, the narrative off of that story ministers to everybody. Wow. Because all of us have all kinds of reasons that we could just be stuck in the place. Yeah. And making excuses like, I can't do it. Right. I'm not good enough. Right. And guess what? I love the, 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 uh, the parable, like the metaphor they used by him being paralyzed. Yes. So when you said that, I promise you, I just, I did my whole video on the diary of the first episode, which is me only, right? Really? And I just did it. I was wow. staying up all night long. I couldn't even get it until wow. this morning. Wow. 
Wow. Four o'clock in the morning, I stayed up all night, and I could not hear from God. Wow. I could not hear him. Mm. And I was like feeling in my spirit. I was paralyzed. I said, mm. God, I've been too gone. I've been, I've been gone from you too long. Mm. I'm sorry, God. Mm, mm, but I need mm. you to speak to me. You got me here. You got me mm. on this platform, and I'm paralyzed. I use the word paralyzed. Wow. Do you hear me? Wow. So when I turned your song on in that bathroom, I said, uh uh-uh, uh, we just got finished with this makeup. We not, we're not about to do this today, <laughs> Angel. We're running late too. Uh uh-uh. uh. But it spoke to me mm. because fear will paralyze you. Yes, it will. Fear will suffocate you. Say it, sis. And fear will sabotage your future. Come on, say that. So, honey, walk. Yeah. Get up and walk. Yeah. I don't care. Pick up your bed. Take your bed and, up and get walk. Up and walk. That's right. And if you can't walk, crawl. Woo! Because I felt like that in 2019. Come on. I have. You got to understand who I am. I'm a happy-go-lucky person. Mm-hmm. I love people. Yeah. I love life. Mm-hmm. I'm always having a party, and that's why I love hashtag party with a purpose. Yeah, because I don't be hanging out in the clubs unless we go into another country. We might, you know, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna find me in Atlanta like that. But again, Woo! I enjoy life. Mm. To the fullest. So when I got knocked down, mm. I went through that metamorphosis, that change, that transition, mm. that God was crushing me. When you're in that cocoon, what happens when you, you're in that cocoon? You're Come liquefied. On. That's right. Before you are mm. solidified. That's right. So, honey, I went through it, and I didn't understand it. Mm. And it broke me down. And see, this generation is going to be awakened and the enemy is trying to come in here and keep you blinded Mm. while you're awakened, while your mind is being awakened. But see, God wants you to keep your eyes on him. That's right. Because that's why we're getting lost and we're getting sunk Mm. in the ocean of despair. Mm. Sorrows mm-hmm. Make no excuses. Mm. It's our it's our responsibility, just like Darlene said, to win. That's right. To do what it is that God has called you to do. Because it, it you believe in the power that's in you. That's it. Jesus saw a power in him that he didn't see in himself. He would rather believe he was paralyzed. Come on. But it's all about, it's a belief see? system. This whole thing is about BS a belief system. BS is what I call it. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> BS. It's Drop about our BS. belief systems, yes. and I believe that's why God used this entire story about Christ Come on. to get into our belief system. Let me tell you how bad and brilliant our God is. Come on, He made everything unbelievable just so you'll make <laughs> so you'll make a firm decision to believe. Everything about Christ is unbelievable. I love it's it. unbelievable. That's His brilliance. God's brilliance would take a virgin, Come on. and give her a baby. That's unbelievable, that honey. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's is. unbelievable it is. for for a young man to go to a party and turn water into wine. That's Come unbelievable. On. Where they do that at? Right. And for him to walk up into a, a man who has been dead for, for four days, mm-hmm. it's unbelievable But that Jesus just told him to come forth, and here he was, r- r- risen from the dead. And mm-hmm. all of the miracles that, that took place, and for a, a Jesus Christ to look at his friends and say, I'm going to die. Imagine me sitting here talking to my homegirls. So Come on. check this out. I'm going to die. Okay? Oh, and in three days, I'm coming back alive. Do you want, Can you imagine how his friends felt about I would, him saying I that? I would think it's time for you to be submitted. unbelievable. <laughs> right. It's unbelievable. But not only did he prophesy it, he did it. He endured the cross, but he died. But he came back alive, honey. He did. And walked around and then ascended. Back to the Father. Do you see? God oh, ascension. is brilliant. Ascension, yes. His brilliance made mm-hmm. everything about Christ unbelievable. That's it. So that when somebody says, I am a believer. Come on, Darlene. Do you see what I'm saying? He's in the whole system. He's making systems out of all of us with That's Christ. It. That's it. Do you see what I mean? Oh, he I gets into it. your system. Yes. The system of Angel. The yes. system of Andrea. The system yes. of Darlene. He gets into our system. Yes. With our belief. We have to. that that unbelievable story. I believe it to be true and I confess it with my mouth that yes. it is my truth. You see what I'm I saying? I love it. And yes. I love how you say the unbelievable. Yes. Because as a child, yes. we need to go back to that childlike faith. Yes. I was always imaginative. I always played with my Barbies for a long time and my dolls and I imagined my life. I imagined my future. We need to get back to, we need to go back to, you know, imagining 
what God has for us, creating our own world. Yeah. If we can just get back to that. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people just, we're living adult life and we're just coming to work, we're going to work, coming home, eat, sleep, mm-hmm. do it all over again. That's but where's it. the fun? Right. Where is the fun? Why aren't you not, you're, you're your own conscious creator. Mm. If only people knew. Instead of, you know, making law of attraction go, go so viral. Let's take the law of God, the law, the, the law, the Holy Ghost. Let's talk about that. Let's get a little cocky about the I am in the Bible. Mm-hmm. But let's stay humble. Like, if you know who you are mm-hmm. and what resides in you, mm-hmm. you can do the unbelievable. And we're supposed to be. That's able it. To, if That's Jesus it. said, greater works shall you do, That's and they it. already didn't believe what he was doing. Come on. We can do absolutely anything. Amen. But we have to, and that's what we always fight against is that humanity right. that, that wants to keep us restricted and limited and marginalized. Yes. But because I believe, I'm a believer. Amen. You know, and I have to say this um, back in 2017, I denounced the label Christian. <gasps> Darlene, get off my phone. I Are you serious? You to, yes, I did. Delar- Darlene, listen. You I need denounced to get it. out my head. Yeah. I wanted this to is, say that to is, you because. Oh my God. It's because that label puts you Thank into you, so many restrictions. Thank you. Um, and what I mean by that Ooh. is there are so many people that say they're Christians that I don't want to be associated with. I don't want my life associated with these savage people. The KKK say they're Christians. Come on. You see what I'm saying? There's a, there's, there's a lot of people. There's conservatives that say that they're Christians. Come on, God. And that has nothing to do with Christ. And people that need to understand the, that where that term came from. The term came from a pagan who who hated the the disciples of Christ and it was a derogatory term as if to eat, to call us the n word that's it it's the same thing do you see what i'm saying and it's like um i'm not that and there is nothing derogatory about my christ come on and i don't ascribe to the term as a matter of fact what jesus said jesus said that they by this they'll know that you're my disciples yes. that means you don't need a label that's it but you need to be showing love and a tree is known by its fruit. What kind yes. of fruit is it bearing? That's the way that you identify people, That's not because it. they say they are Christians. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? So um, I, I, when I took the label off, that's a bigger challenge for me to live in Christ. That's it. Because I actually want people to know that I'm in Christ. That's it. But I don't want to be identified as a Christian. You need to get out of my head. I'm just saying. I know sis. why now you're on this show and why I couldn't get everybody else I wanted on there because he always puts somebody on this show that I need. Bless God. That I know that the whoever's watching, I don't care if it's one person, I know they got it today. Come on. I think they got the real meaning of what it means to lose your religion. Come on. Because sometimes when you go through that transition and you're waking and you're like going through a spiritual death because that's exactly what I went through in 2019. I totally disconnected myself because I didn't know who I was. Mm. I, I'm sorry. I mean, I know y'all, it's hard for y'all to believe that. Angel, you didn't know that? I mean, you're like the epiphany of what church is. <laughs> I mean, I was the queen of church. Mm. But I got lost in the sauce. Mm. And who is going to be brave enough to say that they did? When do, what do you do when you lose connection? Mm. What do you do? You got to bring them on back home. Mm. You got to go back home. You mm. got to go back home where you came from. You got to know who you are. You got to know Jesus for who he is for yourself. Mm. I can't just give you him. Mm. You got to take him in. He's knocking at the door. Pastor Kim always says he is a gentleman. Mm. We serve Come a on. gentleman. He's Come not on. a monster. He's just mm-hmm. knocking mm-hmm. and he's waiting and he wants to come in and serve. Come on. Let him in. That's right. Lose your religion. Yes. That's the best thing to celebrate. I'm not celebrating my birthday, y'all. I didn't spend thousands of dollars this year like I used to. Yeah. I used to celebrate all month long. How many times did my friends call me and say, hey, Angel, what you doing? Can you believe it? I'm not doing anything this year. I told my husband, I'm working. Don't do it. He bought me flowers. Okay, great. And all this other stuff. And he wanted to take me out to dinner. I said, I'm focused right now. Mm. I'm focused on the people. I'm focused on what they need to mm-hmm. hear because they're not going to church anymore. So I'm going to put right. it out there. Let's right. take it viral. Right. I want you guys to share it. I want you guys to celebrate not my birthday today. Not about fire to inspire, but that fire that mm-hmm. we need back in the land. Mm-hmm. 
We need Jesus. Absolutely. We need him. Let's celebrate him today. And let's because, toast. Listen. Let's, let's do let's it. Let's toast. Hello. Yes. <laughs> let's do it. He needs to live within us, and we need to get real with him because, listen, all those questions that we had about the Bible should have been answered when we was talking about war last week. Mm. <laughs> Okay, it got a little real. <laughs> okay, it, it got came real, a little too close too. to home. So we real. need to pick up that Bible. I had so many questions about the word. I didn't know what it was real. Let's mm -hmm. just be real. I, I was this girl. Mm -hmm. I was a hard-headed millennial mm -hmm. that knew God for herself, mm -hmm. but I just didn't. I wasn't, I wasn't buying all of it. Yeah. I was in church. I loved it, but yeah. I wasn't buying all of it. Mm -hmm. But now that the word, I don't know whoever wrote the Bible. Knew what they was talking about. Because, mm -hmm. honey, it's coming forth. And we're in a season where we need to get ready. We need to be equipped. Come on. And I'm telling you, you can't do this walk alone. Because I tried. I got away from the church. I went through a spiritual death. And listen, the enemy really tried to take me. He wanted to take me. He wanted to take the person that I've been talking on the phone. People, that's want, the people that really off themselves last year took, it, it was too late for them. It's mm. not too late for you. If you're going through depression, if you're going through anxiety, if you're going through whatever, trust me, sister, brother, I feel you. I know what that feels like, but I know why I had to go through it. Mm. The happy girl, the one that shouts, mm. don't matter where I'm at, I'm going to praise God. If you really know me, I, 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 that's who I am. Mm. But I got down in my spirit because God wanted me to feel it so I can come here and tell you. Hope is not lost. Mm. He's real, y'all. Mm. And I'm here to tell you I'm happy about it. Because I was sad for years. I didn't I, I had all these questions. Mm. Celebrate. That's right. Let's celebrate. And we're gonna have a little cake here coming in real quick. And y'all, I want you to just get your lives together. Get closer with God. Talk to your pastors. Get back into the church. Listen, I'm gonna get back into my word. I, I kind of got away from it, y'all. I, I opened it up and I thought it was a demonic spirit. I was like seeing so many things. I got a prophetic gifts and it scared Come the Jesus out of me. <laughs> I saw everything. <laughs> Do you hear me? I, I saw I want to tell you everything. something, sister. It's, it's time to teach. We have so many people that are in church that have been in church. And even the scripture says, by now you ought to be teachers. Come on. And because there are a lot of <laughs> teachers that won't teach, but they want to keep receiving. That's it. You know, it's time to switch the game up. Yes. Because society and our culture needs us. Yay. They need us. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, we got a cake going here. Here comes the cake. Woo Happy birthday to Fire to Inspire. Yes. Fire to Inspire. And also happy birthday to Jesus because we're going to bring him back to life. We're going to make Jesus back. To, we're going to make him popular again. That's right. Because you know that word. God didn't hold no weight in 2019. Everybody mm -hmm. was full of it. They was they were tired of it. They were tired of going to the church. Mm. But we gotta give we gotta give God his credit because he needs us. Like you said, we need to get out there and teach and help yes. people and Absolutely. reach beyond the walls. That's right. Reach beyond the walls of That's church right. and get busy in the community and help mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. along the way. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Darlene, tell us what's next for you. What you got going on? Well, I am actually, um, Jesus Was Eclectic, of course, releases on the 24th. Mm -hmm. um, but on the 29th, I'll be at City Winery with my band. And um, we're going to take everybody through the decades from the 70s, 80s, 90s. Mm -hmm. We're going to take them through um, some of your favorite gospel songs, some of your favorite R&B songs. But Ooh. right in the middle of that gospel and R&B song is going to be my song. <laughs> so we're going to have a Fabulous time. I can't wait. I'm paying I homage to some there. of my favorites. You gotta come. <laughs> you gotta come. And my son yes. is gonna be opening up for me, the champ. Oh, yes. Wow. He's actually a conscious rapper. And um wow. he and his band will be performing as well. And um one of my real good good friends, my brother. R&B singer Alvin Garrett. He is yes. going to be there. He's going to be singing. But I'm getting calls from Leon Timbo. He's going to be in the house. <laughs> I got I got off the phone with Angie Stone this morning. She Ooh, said she's going to be in the house. Baby. Um, the Sherelle to said she's going to be in the house. I'll be in next radio. Go be in the listen, house. Listen, everybody's what? coming. So <laughs> if you don't come to City Winery Atlanta yes, yes. and you miss out on this, that's all on you. Thank it's all, The tickets are only $20 yes, right now. Yes. It's just $20. Yes. Just go to 
www.citywineryatl.com. Yes. Grab your ticket. So Wednesday night on the 29th and just come. You know, a lot of people have just gotten used to me as a radio host, Honey. but nobody oh. knows that I'm, mm-hmm. people don't really know that I'm actually an artist and this is how radio found me doing art. I was, wow. I'm an artist, um, but I, I really feel good going back to my first love. So well, I'll see look. you guys on 29th. Congratulations. Thank you, sis. I celebrate you today. Thank you so much. Because the world is ready for you. We need that fresh sound. Yeah. And you really can sing. Thank you, sis. Do you feel like singing? Because I want to hear a little bit of that anointing you have on your voice. What song are you trying to hear, girl? Whatever you, whatever come on through. I have no idea. Let me think. Um... (laughs) Cause you know I don't I don't you know when people ask you to sing songs they normally looking looking for you to sing one of them old songs. <laughs> I would sing anything. I don't I care. No, okay, you yeah, you. It could you be whatever. It could be Katy Perry. I don't even care. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, God. Yes. Do you think? Come do on, Andrea, think? help me, help me, help me, help what me, help me, help me. You sang on the first um, interview. Yes, Lord. Oh, you better sing. <laughs> oh Lord, she's old. talking about. <laughs> Um, I got Sing no happy choir. birthday. Sing happy birthday. Right? Lord, I hear a showers of blessing. Thou art scattering full and free. Showers the thirsty soul refreshing. Let some drops now fall yes, on yes, me, even me, Lord, even me, even me, Lord, even me. Showers the thirsty souls refreshing. Let some drops now fall on me. Oh my gosh, y'all, come on, give it up. Darlene, thank you. Thank you, sis. Thank you so much for your beautiful voice. Thank you. Your beautiful energy. Thank you. Thank you. You Keep too. Doing all. Thank You're you. so big. Thank it's oh, so great. Thank you. I love it. I, I love have it. Been, I, the enemy has been attacking me so much about this. No, I did not want to do I, it. I can didn't I say do this it. to you about that enemy attack stuff? Let's, mm, let's go there right now. Oh, let's do it. Let's we do it. We're going to break that for the rest <laughs> of your life. Break it. Break it. I want you to understand who you are. Okay. Of course the enemy is going to attack. But he cannot penetrate. No weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Amen. We are in Christ. Amen. You know where Christ is? Seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Far above principalities Amen. and powers. You have a seat of authority, sis. And you don't pick fights with the enemy. The mm. enemy picks fights with you, and he loses every battle. He loses every That's time. That's it. He will never win against you. That's what no weapon means. He will never. He will always pick fights with you because he's the one man, not you. Come on. Honey, you are filled with joy and peace. You are filled with the power and the glory of God. Yes. Stay seated. And if you can sit down and his whole, the whole horse of hair. Uh, do you know how many demons tried to kill you in your sleep? Ooh. And you woke up anyway? Ooh, come on. Do you see what I'm saying? They can't get at you. Whatever the attack may be, it never shall be in the name of Jesus. And that's who we are. They fight you because of who we are. They never win, though. You don't ever have to fight a devil. You don't fight devils. They fight you and lose. Come on. Every time. And if they want to be that crazy, it's all good. But you just remember, sis, who you are. You are seated far above principalities and powers. They're all under your feet. They are beneath you. They're at your footstool. The only thing you got to do is wake up. Sometimes they try to get you sleep. 
<laughs> they try to get you. They try to get your your your. They, they try to get your attention. They try to distract you from who you are. That's it. All you got to do is stay focused. That's you belong it. to God. Amen. Amen. The Almighty God. Amen. I felt that today. Yeah. I felt like we really got fed today a real word that came directly from God, and I thank God that He used this platform. I thank God for IBNX Radio for letting us do this here. Because yes. we're about to change some things. Come change on, Change some perspectives in 2020. We're claiming it right now. Trish, my girl, let's do this. Let's do it. Y'all, let's come together as a family. My fire family, I love you. Thank you so much. Now, Darlene, tell them how they can find you on social media. Go to at you. Darlene McCoy on Instagram and on Twitter. And I am Darlene on Facebook. And they can simply go to IamDarlene.com, my, um, my website, and get all of it. Amen. And get everything. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining this party with a purpose. Thank you for, you know, celebrating my birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! That's what I should have said. Happy birthday. I know. I just... (laughs) All right, guys. We'll catch you next week. It's getting real hot up in here because we are so fired up.